Well, joining us now live is 13th District Congressman Mac Thornberry. Always appreciate it. You always manage when you're back in town to make time for us, so we thank you there. And I figured that was a great place to start. As you just heard at home, folks, the Justice Department has intervened on the Texas voter ID bill, or the law, rather, as they did, as we saw, on redistricting. Do you think in the end, or do you support a voter ID law, and do you think that it will withstand these legal challenges along the way in the end? I think so. Uh, Texas is not the only state that's done this. A number of other states have enacted voter ID acts. The Justice Department is trying to stop them all, and ultimately the courts are going to have to decide whether to let them go forward or to adjust them in some way. So it's still up in the air whether it'll all be settled by the time of our primary, May 29th, but I think it, it hurts all of us if somebody else is voting who should not be voting. It diminishes our vote. So it is important to have the integrity of the voting process. So you would say in the end you would support having to show some type of identification? Sure. It, it makes sense to me. Now that was enacted of course at the state level, but, but as right. a, I want my vote to count. And that means there's got to be integrity in voting. Okay. Um, so now I'm moving on to another question from one of our viewers concerning the military budget and massive, massive cuts that seem to be coming. This viewer asked, can can there be a stop to the administration from, quote, dismantling our military? Uh, yes, we can stop, and it's really important that we do so. And, and there's two different levels of cuts. One that are being implemented now, and that was really an agreement last year that keeps the military pretty flat. And that's what a lot of the headlines have been about. But much more concerning would be the sequestration. Those are across-the-board cuts that would take effect next January, and they would decimate the military, and we've got to do whatever it takes to prevent them from going into effect. Well, as we recently saw a story right here on KFDX, an exercise with some college students, and it's not easy to all agree and to all make those cuts. Do you find that there are other areas or other alternatives rather than the military cuts? Sure. I think, and a lot of people I think in our area agree, the military military's got to be the first job of the federal government. But beyond that, two-thirds of the federal budget are mandatory spending or entitlement programs. In other words, you could eliminate the military and all the foreign aid and all and a lot of this other stuff and you, we would still have a deficit this year. So until we deal with those entitlements, we're not going to get our budget under control. Okay. Coming from another Texoma viewer, and we appreciate everybody who sent in questions and got on Facebook and helped us out with this. They want to know why politicians force a health program on citizens that they do not themselves have to use and wonders if so many of them would support it if they had to fall under its requirements. Yeah. Well, actually, it, there was a change in the health care bill that r does require all members of Congress and our staff to get health insurance in the future under the state exchanges. In other words, we cannot stay under the federal employee system in the future. So we do have to live under it, but I still think it's a bad idea uh, because it means Washington is dictating health insurance for everybody in the country, and if you don't have exactly what Washington tells you to have, you get fined. I think that's wrong. It ought to be your choice, your decision on the health insurance you get. So even though members of Congress come under it too, I think it's still a bad idea and we need to repeal it. So whether the health insurance you get or just opt out it all together, right? Yeah, no insurance absolutely. at all. That yeah. should be a personal it, choice it in your be, opinion. Your, it should be your choice. Okay. Um, why won't Congress raise the minimum wage in Texas with things like gas and food continuing to increase in price? Well, actually, Congress did raise the minimum wage a couple of years ago, and every time you increase the minimum wage, it means that fewer people have wages, fewer people are employed, and especially young people. That first job is, is a bigger step for, for, them, for an employer to give. And if you think about where we are today, business doesn't know what's happening next. All the new regulations, a possibility of many new taxes, uh, they're holding back. And a further increase in the minimum wage means they would hold back even more. The health insurance bill contributes to, is, is another one of those factors. So increasing the minimum wage means increased unemployment, and we don't need that. We need more people working. Absolutely. Um, now back to the gas prices. Do you think the president's energy policies encourage higher prices, and is it just going to get even worse as we drive into summer? Um, if the president continues along this course, yeah, I think it, it could get worse. And, and just think about what he's done since he's been in office. 
Uh, he's, he's cut off drilling offshore and on federal lands. Uh, he's, he's threatened to raise taxes on the oil and gas industry. He has vetoed the Keystone Pipeline. He has sent EPA out to harass uh, drillers and so forth. No wonder gas prices are going. So things happen in the Middle East, and that affects the world price of oil, no question. But what people hear from this administration is an anti-fossil fuel agenda. We've got to turn that around, produce more oil and gas and everything else here at home. The more energy we produce here at home, the more stable our energy supplies and energy prices will be. Well, not only in the U.S., but here in Texas, it's a, it's a huge bread and butter for a lot of folks. Absolutely. Uh, the president insists economic sanctions can still keep Iran from developing a nuclear arsenal. Do you think this strategy should continue, and if so, for how long? Hmm. Uh, it's a hard question. I don't know the answer for sure. Uh, I think sanctions have a chance of making some difference, at least delaying their program. But sanctions have got to be tougher, and they've got to be enforced by everybody. There's too many holes in them now. But Ultimately, if Iran wants to have nuclear weapons, uh, they will starve their people, if necessary, in order to get nuclear weapons. And uh, what we can do to prevent that, even a military action, is not assured of, of preventing that from happening. It's probably the most dangerous thing going on in the world right now. All right, real quickly, we're about out of time. Do you think Israel will receive our military support if it takes military action back to Iran, against Iran? Um, we already support uh, Israel tremendously with military and economic assistance. Uh, Israel thinks their existence is at stake because Iran has said we will bomb you with our nuclear weapons and, and it demolish the state of Israel. Now, if you think your very existence is at stake, you'll take action regardless of the consequences and they may make that decision and we may be powerless to stop it. Okay. Um, one last thing, um, what, are, what are your plans as far as voting on stem cell research funding? Um, I don't know that there will be a new proposal before Congress. Uh, the president has, has changed those guidelines somewhat. But if you read the research, tremendous progress is being made with adult stem cells that you don't have to destroy an embryo to receive. And, and that looks very promising and that is a type of medical research I think we all can embrace and are very excited about. All right, who knows where we can go from here, right? Yeah. There's some brilliant minds out there working on and, it and as we, we just speak. need to keep them working because they right. can do amazing things. All right, we appreciate you coming on so much and to all of you out there in Texoma who sent in these questions and as always you had great answers for all of them. Wow. <laughs> we'll be right back.